Hello and welcome to this exciting masterclass on VGG19. Whether you're new to deep learning or already have experience, this video will take you through one of the most influential convolutional neural networks ever created, VGG19. We'll explore its architecture, how it became a game changer in computer vision, and why it still holds immense value in deep learning. Ready to dive in? So let's get started. Before we dig into the architecture of VZ19, let's step back in time and understand the context of its creation. The year was 2014, and the deep learning community was buzzing with excitement. After the groundbreaking success of AlexNet in 2012, which nearly obliterated the competition in the ImageNet challenge, researchers were keen to push the limits even further. Models like ZFNet and GoogleNet tried different tricks, more filters, more diverse architectures, and even more convolutions, but they were still somewhat limited by the available computational power. Enter VG19, an architecture that focused on something seemingly simple, yet incredibly effective, depth. Instead of using exotic configurations of filters and layers, VG19 showed the deep learning world that simplicity and depth could yield powerful results. The big idea was straightforward. What if we kept the network simple but made it deeper? Could a deeper network learn more useful features? Could it generalize better? The answer was yes, and VG19 emerged as one of the best performing models of its time. So, what made VG19 such a monumental model? Here are some of the key contributions. VG19's architecture was strikingly simple. It used 3x3 three three filters across all its convolutional layers, which was a bold move. These smaller filters could learn fine-grained features and when stacked, they simulated larger receptive fields, creating a powerful and elegant solution. With 19 layers, VGG19 demonstrated that deeper models could indeed learn more meaningful and hierarchical features. The deeper the network, the more complex the patterns it could recognize. VGG19 effectively captured this particular principle. And when it was trained on ImageNet, VGG19 achieved an impressive 92.7% top 5 accuracy, a key milestone for image classification at the time. Its performance helped establish it as one of the go-to models in the deep learning community. Now, we'll take a look at the VGG19 architecture in more detail. At first glance, the model may seem straightforward. But behind its simplicity lies a deep and well thought out structure designed to perform exceptionally well in image recognition tasks. Here's an overview. The network first accepts an image of size 224 into 224 into 3. That's the standard size for VGG19 when trained on ImageNet. It ensures that the image dimensions are manageable yet rich enough to capture details. VGG19 has 16 convolutional layers. The real power of these layers lie in the small 3x3 filters. Smaller filters help the network focus on tiny details in the image and stacked together they allow the network to gradually learn more abstract and complex features. After certain blocks of convolutional layers, you'll see max pooling layers. Max pooling helps to reduce the spatial dimension of the feature maps, thereby reducing the number of patterns and making the network more computationally efficient. After passing through the convolutional and pooling layers, the network flattens the 3D feature maps into a 1D vector and passes them through fully connected layers. These layers are responsible for making predictions based on the features learned in the earlier layers. Finally, the softmax layer outputs the probability of for each of the thousand ImageNet classes, determining which category the image belongs to. Now, you might be wondering why use 3x3 filters. After all, larger filters like 11 or 11 or 7 by 7 were being used in earlier models like AlexNet. Well, the beauty of VGG19's design lies in the 3x3 filter. Here's the intuition. Smaller filters capture fine details in the image like edges. And when you stack them in multiple layers, the network can learn more complex features. A stack of two 3x3 filters can capture a receptive field equivalent to 5 by 5 filters and a stack of 3 3 by 3 filters can capture the same receptive field as 7 by 7 filters. 
The stacking of small filters is computationally efficient. Fewer parameters mean the network is lighter and less prone to overfitting. So with 3x3 filters, VCC19 was able to strike the perfect balance between computational efficiency and model performance. Now we'll take a deeper dive into the actual layers of VCC19. I'm going to walk you through the architecture step by step and you'll start to see how each block contributes to the overall effectiveness of the model. The first block is the input block with two convolutional layers. We start with an image of 224 into 224 into 3. The first two convolutional layers use 64 filters, which means they focus on learning low level features like edges. After convolution, a max pooling layer reduces the spatial dimension to 112 times 112 times 64. Block 2 are the two convolutional layers with 128 filters. The next two layers increase the number of filters to 128. Now, the network begins to abstract higher level features like simple shapes. After pooling, the feature map size is reduced to 56 into 56 into 128. Block 3, four convolutional layers with 256 filters. This blocks dives even deeper. With 256 filters, the network starts to capture more complex features such as corners and contours. The size is reduced to 28 into 28 into 256 after pooling. The block 4 contains a 4 convolutional layers with 512 filters. Here, the number of filter increases to 512. Now, the network is abstracting complex patterns like part of objects. After pooling, the spatial dimension are reduced to 14 into 14 into 512. And block 5 consists of 4 convolutional layers with 512 filters. In the final convolutional block, we again have 512 filters, allowing the network to learn even more complex features. The final size of the image or the feature map is 7 times 7 into 512. Once we reach this stage, we flatten the data into a vector and pass it through the fully connected layer, which makes the final prediction. So why does VCC19 continue to be an important model in the deep learning space? We'll talk about its advantages. The architecture is simple and uniform using just 3x3 convolutional filters and 2x2 max pooling layers. This makes it easy to implement and experiment with. VCC19 has become a go-to model for transfer learning. Since it was pre-trained on ImageNet, it's often used as a feature extractor for, our, for other tasks such as detecting diseases in medical images, recognizing objects in satellite photos, or even generating artistic images in style transfer. As VCG19 is deep, it learns complex hierarchical features at different levels, from simple edges to integrate textures and object parts, making it highly versatile. But given its power, VCG isn't without its challenges. Because VCC19 is computationally expensive, with over 140 million parameters, it requires a lot of memory and computing power, which can be a problem for larger datasets. Training VCC19 can take a long time, especially if you don't have access to powerful GPUs. And newer models like ResNet and EfficientNet have introduced techniques that improve accuracy while requiring fewer parameters and less computations. But Given its limitation, VCG19 still shines in many real-world applications. VCG19 has been used for disease detection in X-rays and MRIs. For instance, it helps doctors detect lung cancer, heart disease and other conditions by extracting useful features from medical images. VCG19 is widely used in artistic applications like neural cell transfer, which where it helps blend content and style from different images to create something entirely new and artistic. With its powerful feature extractor, VCG19 is frequently used in object detection tasks such as identifying object in security footages or autonomous driving scenarios. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into VCG19. We've covered everything from the architectural design to its key contributions, challenges, and applications. I hope you now have a deeper understanding of this iconic model and why it remains relevant in the deep learning community. If you found this content useful, don't forget to hit like, 
subscribe and, sh and share it with others. Let's continue this deep learning journey together and explore even more advanced models in the future videos. See you next time.